All right, here comes another one. Now we're talking about rings. So, you know what they say, if you like it, then you should define a ring on it. So, to begin with, C plus zero is associative and commutative. I'll just say that because R plus zero is uh, that's basically we like if, if you just write out the steps for associativity and commutativity of fun of continuous functions um, or just real valued functions in general what it comes down to is you want to show pointwise associativity and commutativity and that will follow because at, at every point these functions are real valued and so that's how it follows from the case of the real values. Uh, so that part's not hard. Uh, the one where you need to do a little more work, actually I think we might have done some of this already, but whatever. Okay, so if f is c, g and c, then f plus g is in c by basic analysis. Uh, this is uh, I'm pretty sure you prove it in Walter in uh, Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Walter Rudin, which is like a fantastic textbook and probably the pr probably the first like real real analysis textbook that you'll come across or work through. And so if you haven't gone through it, like if you're just like getting into this algebra stuff and you're like, oh, I don't really like this analysis. Definitely try it out. It's, it's really interesting. It's very visual, in, in my opinion, at least. And anyway, so to prove that f plus g is in c, so for commuti for a continuity, there is a delta epsilon definition. And so if you want to prove that f plus g is continuous at a point, you just do an epsilon over 2 argument which e with each of the individual functions. That should work. So anyways, also... If f is in c, then negative f is in c because uh, uh, the 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 continuity argument is base is uh, symmetric in uh, the sign. Like the delta epsilon definition, you've got uh, absolute value signs that are going on there, and so those don't care. Uh, which sign things are, so if f is continuous, then negative f will be as well. You know, now that I think about it, because this is an algebra textbook, maybe the audience might be a little more topologically oriented, where you want to prove, uh, define continuity in terms of open sets, but uh, whatever. I, I like describing things in terms of analysis. I think it's more natural. Anyways, so this implies this. And f plus minus f equals f minus f equals zero. Uh, and clearly, zero plus f equals f equals f plus zero. And hence, c plus zero is an abelian group. Okay, as for the other one, uh, C and let's see here. Okay, well, he called it dot here, but I think it should be typically this, the circle thing he is used for composition of functions, but whatever. This is its function composition, by the way, that should be clear. Um, we have discussed that dot is associative. Uh, you can go back and read, I think it's section 0 0.3 where he kind of goes in and discusses a lot of the more basic like function theory stuff. Uh, like basic facts about functions. Okay, so anyways, so for all f and c, for all x and r, one of f of x, uh, here 1 times f of x equals 1 of f of x 
which is just f of x, which is also f of 1 of x. Here, 1, uh, I should probably make that a little more clear, but 1 here, this is not the number 1. It's the function 1. It takes every element to the number 1. Oh, wait a minute. No, the identity should be. This is all wrong. Let I be the identity function that sends x to x. Then I is certainly continuous, and for all f in C, for all x in R, one, uh, no, yeah, it's I. I of I times f, this product evaluated at x is equal to I of f of x, which is equal to f of x, which is equal to f of I of x, which is just f times i, this product evaluated at x. So i, wait a minute. Oh, and one, the identity map. Uh, here, let's make that an i. Just so that I don't have to erase everything. I was like, I was going through my notes and I was like, why am I using one and not using it the way that one is? It's because this is I. So I is let's see here. So we have associative uh, binary operation and So all we want to do is closure. That's the only thing that remains. Also, again, by basic analysis, if f and g are in c, then so is f of c. And that actually might be a little easier if you go with the topological definition where inverse images of open sets are open because if you have like uh, a, B, C, F, F times G is you evaluate G, ooh, ooh, ooh. F will go from A to B, G will go from uh, B to C, then F of G is this, is that right? Yeah, because F goes from A to B, and G goes from B to C. No... It has to be back, oh, because composition of functions, so it's like f of g of whatever. So what this really should be is this should be g and this should be f. Um, because first you're going to move from right to left and you're going to take an element of a, you're going to feed it through g, g to get to b, then feed it through f to get to c. Uh, oh, by the way, this c here is, let's make this x, y, and z so that we don't confuse the c's. Anyway. So uh, with continuity, you have the inverse image of an open set is open. So if you take an open set in Z, its inverse image under F is open. And then that gives you an open set in Y. And the inverse image of that under G is also going to be open in X. And so if you, the, the inverse image of you, you've taken an open set of in, in Z and pulled it back to an open set in X. So that's how you do that. But if you want to do it the analysis way, what you'd want to do is you want to do a, de a delta epsilon that argument where you do a delta epsilon, so like you take some, uh, let's see here, for every epsilon there exists a delta, so you'd have an epsilon, in, uh, a, a ball of radius epsilon in Z, or so the, the, these are, this is a real line, right? Yeah. Yeah, so these sets should all be the real line. Whatever. Um, you'll take something in Z and it'll be it'll have radius epsilon. Yeah, just an interval of epsilon and then you'll pull it back to an interval of delta. And then 
that's going to be your new epsilon that you're going to use g on and then you'll get like a some delta one here and you'll just pull it back basically the the epsilon inter the the delta epsilon in y is going to be your epsilon that you start with to choose a delta uh, new delta um, interval in x so anyways uh, the the point that I'm trying to say by rambling on and on and on is that this should be easy which is kind of funny because if it was easy it wouldn't take a whole lot of talking so really this this isn't this isn't super easy to prove it's not super quick to prove but it's kind of on the more basic level especially in analysis and topology but it's not really an algebra fact anyways um, so yeah, I guess the point there is that if you were to just start reading this textbook without reading anything else, not sure if this would be obvious. Um, but in which case there might be some appendices in the textbook that explain continuity and this and that and some basic stuff that are you that's useful not only for this but for math in general. Anyways, hence this is a monoid. But C is not a ring. Uh, and why is this? What what could possibly go wrong? The only thing that could possibly go wrong is distrib distributivity. And so what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to okay try to break distributi or yeah distributivity and. The easiest, you, you try to use like the dumbest functions that you can, and the easiest things to look at is like, okay, let's take the function that sends everything to zero, and then the function that says every, sends everything to one, see if we can come up with anything. And what you might end up with is, you have one, here this is not the identity function, this is the function that sends everything to one. And you compose this with one plus zero. Uh, what is this? This is equal to, you do um, 1 plus 0 is 1, so this is just 1 t composed with 1, and so one, the, the function that's ident identically 1, you compose it with 1, you get 1. Um, but the function that's identically 1 is not the function that's identically 2, obviously. Uh, but what's this? This is 1 plus 1, which, uh, let's see here, this is 1.1 1 .1 plus 1.0. Now be careful here because this uh, this 1.1 here, that's clear. 1.0 is 1 because dot is uh, its uh, composition. And so even though the 0 function sends everything to 0, the 1 function will send 0 to 1. And so this does end up sending everything to 1. And so this is uh, valid. Uh, but if this were a ring, then distribute um, which contra contradicts distributivity because if it were distributive then you'd be able to distribute this one through here and you get one composed with one plus one composed with zero which is what we have over here but we have this inequality sign here and so there you go. This is not a um, this is not a ring, and this completes the proof.